four score and seven years ago. All right, well, it hasn't been quite that long, but it does seem like a technological eon has passed since Google last released the Chromebook Pixel, the first Chromebook that challenged the idea of what a Chromebook could be. This time around, Google isn't just launching fancy hardware with the hope that it would be enough to launch the Pixel Book. It's also launching some significant new features to coincide with the release. Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines, and this is our review of the Google Pixelbook and Pixelbook Pen. With an ever-increasing amount of quality, inexpensive Chromebooks out there, how is Google differentiating the Pixelbook, a Wacom-powered stylus, enterprise support, the ability to run Android apps out of the box, and a new premium design are just a few pieces of what makes the Pixelbook special and interesting. Let's start with the hardware. Sporting the thinnest design yet seen from a Chromebook, this 10mm 1.1 kilogram laptop is certainly smaller and lighter than your average laptop, and it's built to last too. An aluminum unibody design makes the Pixelbook feel ultra strong and ultra premium. With its thick cut cold metal that wraps around the entire body, Google has accented its design with a familiar glass strip around the back and lots of quality rubber components for grip and comfort. The keyboard looks nearly identical to what you'd see on a MacBook, or really at this point most laptops, and the rubber palm rests feel incredibly good. What's really smart here is that the keyboard is recessed into the frame just a bit, which not only keeps it from touching the screen while the Pixelbook is closed and smearing it up, but also keeps it from touching whatever flat surface the laptop is on when it's folded in different modes. The keys feature a nice soft touch material and are nice and clicky while not being too loud at the same time. The 0.8 millimeter travel feels great and is not as squishy as many other laptops out there. It's also backlit, which is a plus. A dedicated Google Assistant button brings up Assistant instantly, or saying the Google keyword will also do it. A nice touch here is that it automatically goes into voice recognition search when saying the keyword, whereas pressing the key will default to typing input only, making for a consistent experience all around. The only annoyance with Google Assistant is that it doesn't search everything the same way the app drawer search does. So it would be nice to see this combined in the future. The glass touchpad is ultra accurate and supports all the multi-fingered gestures that Chrome OS already does with the speed and accuracy out of the box that just feels natural. I didn't really care for the up, up, down, down scrolling that's default as I'm used to reverse scrolling on laptops or reverse joysticks on game controllers, but I got over it soon enough. Above the keyboard sits a pair of hinges and you'd never expect what's just underneath the rubber here two stereo speakers facing straight up towards the user's face while in laptop mode. This is also the crux of the design as they are facing away from the user when in any of the other modes and really feel like they should be in the top portion of the Pixelbook where the monitor is instead. They're loud enough and of decent enough quality, but the direction is wrong when they seem like they would be needed the most. You'll find a dedicated power slash lock button on the side, a dedicated volume rocker for when the keyboard isn't the primary input method, two USB type C ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. These two USB type C ports are used for charging with the included 45 watt power brick, video output with support up to 4K at 30 frames a second, and file transfer among other things I'm probably not thinking of. While only having USB Type-C ports might be a problem on a Windows or Mac machine, it seems to be fine on a Chromebook, or at least in my usage over the past few weeks, I can't say I've run into any problems. The hinges are of the utmost quality, and are both incredibly sturdy, yet just pliable enough to keep from having to always use two hands while opening or closing the Pixelbook. There's even a nice little notch up front for grabbing to open the Pixelbook, although I do wish it jutted out a tad more for comfort. As said before, the Pixelbook can be used in multiple orientations, including as a tablet, which feels surprisingly good thanks to the 10mm thickness and light 1.1 kilogram weight. That's still heavier and thicker than a dedicated tablet by quite a bit, but it's far thinner and lighter than most laptops with a dedicated keyboard and other important internals. The size and sharp edges of the metal make it most awkward to use as a tablet, but really only if you're trying to play games like Asphalt 8 or something that requires motion, otherwise it really is a joy to use. The screen is quite nice too, and has a high quality IPS LCD 12.2 inch panel with quad HD resolution and a good level of brightness at 400 nits. Pixel persistence could be a little lower though, and I found motion resolution in general makes fast moving games a bit fuzzy. That last part brings us to one of the most significant features of the Pixelbook, full Google Play Store support. Sure, this isn't exclusive to the Pixelbook, but there still are not a ton of Chromebooks on the market that can run Play Store Android apps just yet, and launching with this capability means an easy box to tick for buyers looking for a massive library of apps. It's incredible just how well Chrome OS integrates Android apps too. You'd never know these weren't native apps as they look and behave exactly exactly as Chrome OS apps do, including the ability to full screen, window, and resize them, minimize, or do whatever else. Some apps require redrawing on resizing, 
and things like games will actually pause in the background. So there is some different behavior in some ways, but it's not likely that many users will notice these things or even think they're an issue. Performance is perfect too, and again, you'd never know these weren't native apps, including the most intensive 3D games in the Play Store. The Intel HD graphics built into the Pixelbook is more than enough for games written for Android devices, and it's really impressive how Google has built such perfect ARM support on an x86 chipset. On to the Pixelbook Pen. This is an active stylus powered by a single AAA battery, which interfaces with the Pixelbook via a Wacom digitizer. You'll likely recognize the Wacom name as it's famous for many tablets out there and is the primary way Samsung's S Pen interfaces with the Galaxy Note series. Sporting 2,000 levels of pressure, 60 degrees of angular awareness, and a super low 10 millisecond response time, the pen sounds great from the spec sheet. Pairing is the easiest thing in the world simply because there is no pairing process. Stick the battery in and it's ready to go as soon as it touches the screen. It's really awesome. The design and use of it leaves a bit to be desired though, and it starts with the pen itself. The physical shape is pleasant enough and looks rather nice with an aluminum body and a soft touch front. A single button is here and works to call up Google Assistant. Holding the button and circling anything on the screen will call up a visual search, which works absolutely perfectly for my testing. This will extract names, addresses, and any other pertinent information, and can also be used to search for graphics and other stuff you see on the screen. Writing with it feels nice, with a good friction that feels similar to Samsung's Galaxy Note line, and the pen has a nice weight to it as well, but it's got two design issues that I'm just not a fan of. First of all, it's perfectly round, and it's weighted slightly towards the button, which means it easily rolls the second you put it on a surface. On top of this, there's nowhere to actually place the pen, as it's not magnetic, doesn't have a clip or any other way to fasten it to something, and there's no holster on the Pixelbook itself. For 99 bucks, I would have expected more, and even the performance of the pen itself leaves a lot to be desired. Plenty of times I would see it connect the dots, if you will, and create lines between words and notes when it wasn't intended to. Google told us that there were some latency issues and the like with our current units, and these would be ironed out in the production models, so hopefully this gets fixed, because note-taking apps like Nebo make handwriting recognition completely effortless. The new enterprise support in Chrome OS is a big deal too, and will likely help Google expand into more schools and businesses than it already has. We'll be reviewing Chrome OS Enterprise and its Active Directory integration separately, so look for that review in the near future if that interests you. And that just leaves the price. At $999 for the base and going upwards to $1,649 for the top configuration, the Google Pixelbook is far from cheap. Chromebooks are typically cheaper computers, and that's a big part in where their strength lies. So for the price of a Dell XPS 13 or even a regular MacBook, or the price of a middle Pixelbook configuration, it's going to be a bit of a hard sell for Google depending on your needs. Chrome OS is more capable than ever, and its new implementation of Google Assistant, redesigned login screen and app drawer, as well as the massive array of apps available through the Google Play Store lend a huge value for many people out there. But Chromebooks still remain something that isn't right for everyone. I could not do this job with a Chromebook, for instance. There's just not enough mature photo and video editing tools out there, and gamers are going to be stuck with Windows for a very long time. But everyone else might want to give this a look. It's a premium product with a great OS, better battery life than almost any laptop will give you, and a bright future ahead of it. We hope you enjoyed that review and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us in your favorite social media network and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 tech news coverage. Thanks for watching and until next time.